All right, everyone. Thank you for your patience. At 548, I'd like to call the Summersworth School Board meeting of May 28th, 2024 to order. Can I have a roll call, please? Maggie Larson. Here. Todd Marsh. Here. Carrie Clark. Sarah Brian Hart, Here. Crystal D. St. Croix, Here. Marcia Brown, Here. Barbara Wentworth, Here. Susan Tierney, Excused. Gemma Soldati. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, can I please have the retirees uh, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. We have a special item on the agenda this, this evening, and that is our retiree recognition. So I'm going to hand it over to the superintendent and building um, administrators. Okay. So let's. No problem. Okay. Got it? Okay. Um, all right. So, good evening, uh, school board, city of Summersworth, and most importantly, our retirees and all their families that are here this evening. Um, and obviously, this is a pretty special evening, and for nine years that I've been at Idlehurst, I've literally dreaded this moment. I know it happens someday in the days here. Um, we get to honor some of the greats. Uh, together, these six employees back here have 148 years of service. Um, I'm not going to make it through this. I can be very clear. but uh, So six employees, 148 years. There will be no words that can express our deepest gratitude for their years of dedication and commitment to Summersworth School District. Um, I really did try to pawn this off on others, um, but I made a vow that I would muster through this um, because the emotions are very high with all of these guys, not me of course, but the staff behind me. Um, and I know it looks a little weird that most of the people retiring are all on our watch. Um, so after 25 years, that's the least, and one 15 year, every other employee that is leaving um, has put in over 15 years. So it's a, it's a pretty special time. And we haven't done, we have not had many retire in the course of um, Idlehurst and not the three years that I've been here. So I, I really wanted to make this kind of a special opportunity. Um, I know in this world that we learn that, you know, pretty much everybody is replaceable in some capacity. Like th the world, life goes on. But in this situation, not one of these people is replaceable, actually. We'll carry on without them, but they will never be able to be replaced. Um, so in no order, um, Carrie Martinelli, Miss Martinelli, uh, she apologizes. She is not here tonight. She actually is uh, in an airplane uh, headed to Atlanta, Georgia for professional development. And I'll tell you about that after. But she's got a major fear of FOMO. She hates missing out. So she is here. And she would be front line and center if she could. Um, she's had an exciting opportunity in the timing. So Carrie is retiring after 26 years in the district. She started in Title I in Rollinsford. Um, she spent a year there and then went to Maplewood as a kindergarten teacher. And she actually you know, worked with uh, Caroline Butler for all those years. And she got to hang out with Jean Shaheen and cut the purple ribbon when the kindergarten will, uh, wing was built. So she's very proud of that. Um, these are the things you learn when you have to sit down and interview. Um, then when Idlehurst was open, all the kindergartners were moved over and she spent 12 glorious, perfect, no stress years at Idlehurst. We really had, it's been smooth sailing. Um, so um, I don't know if anyone ever has ever spent a day um, in a kindergarten room, but it should be a rite of passage for every human in this world. It gives you a whole new perspective. You are responsible to teach and entertain 20 little motorized vehicles that never stop moving, never stop talking, never stop exploring or asking questions. Miss Martinelli is a true hero.
<laughs> she has started approximately 500 students on their educational journey. In the 25 years, she's touched over 500 students. What a massive responsibilities all of our teachers <clears throat> carry each day. Carrie's loved every child like her own, a secret. This year started at her, as her hardest class ever. Well, they all say that every year, but this year definitely proved to be unprecedented. And the other day, and as we reflected, she realized that every child in her class had made significant sig <coughs> social emotional growth as well as academic growth. Her class started in the lower academic zones, and by the end, 95% of her students are ending in the green zone for academics. It's a pretty phenomenal accomplishment. Her leadership, her teaching, her guidance, and friendship will be missed most by her colleagues when asked. We will all miss Carrie, but the beauty is she isn't leaving. She has been hired through the United Way to carry on her true passion, working with all of us and the Summers Earth Ready Together Coalition to ensure that as many children as possible in our community are ready to enter kindergarten. She will be working with the local community agencies to unite resources and give guidance and support to Summers Earth families as they navigate the early years. Carrie's presence in the school will be missed tremendously but her legacy will live on as she starts her new chapter. Thank you, Carrie, uh, for all your years of service. Huge round of applause and your. <laughs> um, all right, this next one, uh, she, she cried before she even looked at me, so this, isn't, this one's not easy either. Uh, the great nurse, Jackie May. She's given 25 years to our district. She started on the Hill, and those years she reflects as being kind of the best years, and I'm not taking it personally, but it is weird that she wrote that. Um, the community and the staff were family on the Hill. They had several transitions together, bringing them closer as they migrated from the modulars and then to Idlehurst, where the world became huge. They went from a tiny fishbowl to a massive school of 500 kids while merging two schools together. She opened Idlehurst and has never looked back. Jackie's prided herself over the years of taking care of every child in need, as well as teaching students how to take care of themselves. The staff and students adore Jackie, and she loves when she gets notes and cards from them. She's going to miss being part of such a great team and a great family. When I asked colleagues what they loved most about Jackie, the general theme was her genuine love for her job. IES is, <coughs> is truly her family, and she treats every one of us like we are her kids. Truthfully, many of us don't even need a doctor. We all just have Jackie. <coughs> Not only uh, cares for 330 students, but she cares for 85 staff members as well. At all hours, people will text Jackie asking about COVID, asking about the flu, asking what they should do for their own child. It is never ending for her around the clock. Another thing you should do is spend a day in the nurse's office. It's funny how this works, because I really dread that too. Staff knows to stay clear of me on these days. It is never ending, early mornings, late nights, it is so much more than acute sickness. It's allergies, diabetes, special diseases, swallowing concerns, vaccinations, the list goes on. Jackie plans to fun, find some type of nursing job in her next chapter, and she also is gonna be a sub. Oh, and I forgot, Carrie Martinelli's also gonna sub. She doesn't know that yet, but she's subbing. <coughs> um, all right, this next person, oh, sorry, hold on. All right, so um, a big round of applause for Jackie May. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> All right, Jay, you want to come up? All right. Oh, Lord. All right, uh, so there's some big guy in the back. Uh, his name, for those of you who don't know, his name is Mr. Marty. 15 years Mr. Marty has been with us. Um, talking to him is pretty comical about his career here, but he started at the high school. So somebody who wore Jay's hat at that time uh, pointed him to an empty closet 
and said, good luck. Obviously, they took all your stuff, but you got to get to work. So he had not one thing in his closet as he began his journey. Over time, he started to add things one piece at a time. He moved to the hill for a bit. Only Marty, he got employee of the month every single month, so it got so bad he started to hide when they called out their, his name. And then he got a special parking spot up at the hill for um, employee of the month and he felt so bad. Sometimes he liked to share it with other staff members. Um, so he opened Idlehurst, he took a massive building uh, under his wing and never looked back. When you say these are going to be big shoes to fill, this is literally and figuratively. For those of you who do not know Mr. Marty, well, he is a pillar in our school community. He stands six feet, six inches tall, has like size 20 feet, and, and he never, ever stops moving. His body is slowing down a little bit, yet he never stops. This guy is our world. He adores... <laughs> He adores the kids and adores the staff and never complains. He's one of the greatest workers we have, but more importantly, he's just the greatest human. He's a genuine and care and kind. As much as he and I bicker, at the end of the day, he is our ride or die, and we do bicker an awful lot. We would do anything for any, he would do anything for any of us. He greets us with a smile, holds a door, walks us to our classrooms, carries all of our luggage, our baggage, anything. He does it all. Marty is that guy who never says no, and it could be to a fault. I've used him for a para, lunch duty, a substitute, a book reader. To put this in perspective of how serious he takes his duties, he practices for a week reading before he has to read a book. Um, he's done rock bands. He has done it all. Um, he considers this a true family, and he is struggling a great deal leaving, so much that he tried to retire in December, and then he couldn't sleep, so he retracted it. This time, he really is leaving. I'm not sure what I'm going to do when I need to just take five minutes, and Marty and I sit outside and solve all the world's problems, but his next chapter is going to be grand. He deserves it more than anyone I know. It will entail finishing his man shed out back, subbing, which he doesn't know that yet either, and his ultimate goal is making a cup of coffee and going to Nubble Lights to watch the sun rise. Debbie, best of luck, and whenever you need a break from him, please encourage him to sub. Thanks, Eliza. Um, I can't, you said it all, but I would feel remiss not coming up here and saying a few words about Marty. Um, obviously, I've just worked with him for two years. He's been awesome. Um, model custodian from day one. I literally don't have to worry about Idlehurst at all during the day because everything's under control with Marty working. I'm always hearing on the radios of the, of the calls that Marty's always running all around the building taken care of. Um, but I can't, can't say a bad word about the guy. He always goes above and beyond for the kids and the staff. And just like uh, Liza said, it's going to be big shoes to fill going forward. Um, and it's, you know, it's Happy for Marty, but you know we we we're gonna miss him. Thank you. Sorry, I know it's very annoying that I'm still up here, but there's nobody else. So, um, all right. So this next one, um, geez, all right. Um, so Robin Austin, she is another 25-year employee. Um, her her story, I mean, hers is pretty great too. She started at Maplewood. Um, she actually got beaten out for the position by Betty back here. So if anybody didn't know that, <laughs> no fighting though, because Betty's pretty proud that she got that position. Um, so she spent a few years at Maplewood, and then she spent six years up in the hill, and then she opened Idlehurst. And she's been, a, she was a para, one-on-one -on -one para, and then a special ed aide. Um, but most importantly, she fills every hat and every role in our school. Never complains, never says a word. This year especially, it was taxing. It was taxing on everybody. 
but she seemed to have gotten the brunt of it on a daily basis. You might miss her walking around the halls because she's the same height as her students, but she is vice and she is mighty. She is fierce. She is a jack of all trades. Uh, we continue to be short staff <coughs> throughout the year, and she was the one we called on. She never said no and never complained. Um, she said that her favorite part of, I mean, this sums her up, but her favorite part of her job is, see, is seeing the student's success, their eyes lighting up when they have learned, the, li the light has gone on. She will miss their beautiful hugs and their morning greetings because they truly do make a difference in your day. She will miss being a part of a team and a part of a family. One of her favorite stories is um, a little boy recently said, Miss Austin, how old are you? And then his response was, how can you be so old and be so short? <laughs> um, so um, I, we appreciate, obviously, Robin um, and the support of her family and the support of, of Don all these years. Um, she has been a true, true team player and a family member to all of us and we are going to miss her dearly. She will also be subbing, <laughs> um, and she is gonna want, she wants to hold babies. So she's gonna volunteer maybe um, at the hospital, um, and when she grows up, which not height-wise, but when she grows up, <laughs> she's definitely gonna come back to uh, Idlehurst. Thank you, thank you, Robin. Uh, this next um, employee, oh, Betty Anair, uh, she has also given uh, 25 years to our district. She's a second mom to many of us and a true champion of children. When you look up the word champion, that is Miss Anair. Uh, she spent her career both at Maplewood and Idlehurst. Um, she spent a majority uh, in kindergarten um, as an aide, and now she's a preschool aide. Uh, she even beat Robin out, don't forget that. Um, Betty, has, <laughs> Betty has always gone above and beyond in our school to meet the needs of all students. She greets every child with a genuine smile and a warm hello. She uses the name of every staff member to greet them, regardless of whether she's known them for all 25 years or has just met them. Everyone needs a Betty in their lives. When asked what she's going to miss, she responded, all the adorable faces. This is just who Betty is. She has always taught from her heart. She has the biggest, kindest heart, and every child she has had will still say, oh, Miss Amir was always the nicest teacher. She never got upset and always remembered all of our names. I wasn't even her student. That, that was what this one <laughs> kid said. Um, so uh, one story that she had, um, a little boy, two little boys got off the bus on the first day of school. They were bawling their eyes out. There's kids everywhere. The crowd parted and um, so that she could get to the kids. And all of a sudden, another little girl runs up with all excitement and yells, guess what? I have head lice. <laughs> So that really put a damper on Betty's first day's stories. Um, there was no more tears that year, uh, so that was a good thing. Um, she, Betty is excited to spend time with her precious, sweet family, which is all behind us. That kind of shows exactly who Betty is. Like her whole family is here, her grandkids, so she's going to spend a lot of time with her grandkids, as well as she's already been hired at the Summersworth Public Library. So everybody, you can still go and see her. Um, she will be attracting tons of families, I'm sure. Um, and she's also going to be subbing. <laughs> uh, thank you, Miss Sinair. All right, the last one. Um, so Deb Plant, another of the kindest, sweetest, most dear humans ever. She has spent 33 years in our district. She started back in 1988. She left for a few years to care for her husband, and then she missed us so much she came back in 2006. She might be one of the last ones standing that can say she started at Great Falls 
I don't even know anybody who started there. She started Great Falls, that closed. She moved to the Hill, that closed. She moved to Maplewood, the students moved, and then she moved, and then they moved her to uh, the middle school, and then when, I, when Idlehurst reorged, she moved to Idlehurst. So she has covered a huge amount of territory in our district, and yet she's the most like discreet, humble person you would never know. She's got so much knowledge. Um, all these moves and these changes, she has never raised her voice, or ha I've never seen her get mad. She can, on she can now officially say she's worked in every single grade, K to eight. She's loved the challenge that came with her job, always making her a better, always making her a better and more understanding person and a para. When, a when asked why she's here, she said, I've stayed in this district because of the great sense of community support and of course the students. I come from a large family and I've always loved children and this job helped me love them even more. It was all about relationships. <clears throat> if I can make a difference in one child's life, then I've done my job. That's what it's all about. So um, her, so Deb, um, what you don't know about her, she also likes to wrangle um, pigs when they get loose at her farm. She, they run down the highway and um, her partner Sunny screams at her and she corrals them back onto the yard. So. Um, she's going to be doing a lot of pig crawling in her future, um, and she's also going to sub. All right? So a huge round of applause for Deb Plant. <laughs> All right. That's it. Uh, thank you, everybody, and I don't know who's up next. Am I introduced? I'll take a brief okay. 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 Thank you so much. We're probably we're going to take about a five-minute recess just before our uh, regular scheduled board meeting, or just a couple minutes, or would you have to do comments by visitors and board members? Would we like to do that first? Yeah? All right. All right, I'll open it first for comments by visitors as the agenda shows. Are there any comments by visitors this evening? Okay, seeing none, comments by board members. Any comments by board members this evening? Yes, board member Marsh. Yes. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, Deborah Plant, I was counting on you continuing because you started before I graduated from high school. Now I'm, I'm feeling a sense of un unwanted closure for some reason here for me. Um, but really, in all seriousness, um, my gift to you will be my brevity, and, um, and I suppose to the board too, perhaps, but um, really, I want to thank you all for choosing children as your life purpose, including for 33 years and others. Um, rather, it is in, or it was in direct teaching, in a direct teaching role, a supportive role, or a healing role. Um, I cannot think of a life purpose with more of a lasting legacy. Um, so thank you all. Board Member Clark. I just want to take a quick minute and say um, thank you to all of you. Um, I think some of you had my children in school. I'm so honored and um, that you're here and you gave so much time, 150 years. It's a long time, it's a long time, but in, enjoy every minute of your um, retirements and your families, your families are all so beautiful. Okay, that's it, thanks. Okay, board member Wentworth. All right, nobody likes a short meeting like I do, but um, so thank you to everybody, um, the Idlehurst people, um, just because I was really involved there, I was not ready to be emotional in any way, shape, or form. Um, but, uh, you know, Marty did let me ride the Zamboni, uh, which was a highlight of my life and on my bucket list. Sorry, Liza, um, unofficially. And um, Jackie uh, listened to... Uh, 
lots of stories from me and helped me out. Um, and uh, yeah, so everyone, thank you so much. Um, what you do is invaluable and we are so blessed and lucky to have had you all. Anything else? Yes. Um, yeah, I also just want to share uh, my gratitude and thanks for all of you um, who are, are retiring today. Um, many of you spoke about your interest and commitment to community and I think this room speaks volumes of that as I see the mother of friends I went to school with and nurse Jackie you were my nurse at Hilltop a million years ago as well and I think um, and then the Austin family service to this uh, city so I think just being in this room with you all just I, it's is a fraction of our whole school district obviously but just speaks to the connections and how deep they go in Summersworth and obviously is uh, reflected in your commitment to being and working here and serving this community that I personally have benefited from as a student and resident and now as a, a member of this board so thank you anyone else all right Words really fail to kind of express this this gratitude. Um, good job, Miss Coco. That was that's difficult because it's the heart. You're the heart and soul of. You're all ready just for summer. I'm, we're we're feeling it all like just to leave. You're the heart and soul of this of this district. What you've put in is immeasurable. Um, the best thing we can do is recognize that, and continue a legacy of compassion, commitment to kids, and keeping that supported in Summersworth. So from the board, thank you so much. Thank you for all your effort and all your patience and all your dedication. It is really kind of hard to put into words, but we see it and we feel it and um, have a great retirement and we hope to see you around. Thank you. Now we'll take just a brief recess before we continue our board meeting. Thank you. Comments by board members has closed. Agenda item number three, the consent calendar. I make a motion to hold on. The superintendent passed out a document to yeah. you. Um, for non-public mi meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All reviewed. Okay. In motion. Uh, I motion to approve the consent calendar as presented. Second. Oh, oh. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Consent calendar is adopted. Uh, agenda item number four, uh, four point one, our student representatives report. Take it away, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Um, so a lot has happened in May and is coming up in June. Um, so on May 11th, the band and chorus took a trip to Six Flags. Wish I was there, but uh, from what I heard, it was a fun trip and it was worth it. So uh, that's a good thing. Um, on May 17th, uh, in the Black Box Theater, there was a talent show that I got to host. Um, I don't remember who, exactly who the winners were, but I think the prize was like $75. It was, it was a great time, um, awesome involvement from a whole bunch of students. Um, and then the next day on May 18th, there was prom for the uh, junior class, I believe at the River Mill. Um, and then uh, moving on, on May 20th, uh, there was the softball senior night. And then on the 24th, there was the baseball senior night. Uh, so that's all the stuff that's happened beforehand. But uh, coming up on the 30th, um, there will be a senior assembly and a top 10 breakfast for the uh, top 10 students with the highest GPA. Um, we'll get a breakfast. So uh, then on June 1st, uh, there will be a pops night at uh, SHS. Um, it says in parentheses that popular songs will be played, so you know it sounds entertaining. <laughs> um, 
So on the on June third, um, there will it will be the uh, last day for seniors, um, and then on June fourth, there will be the uh, senior banquet at the VFW in Summersworth. Um, June fifth, uh, it will be a senior and senior families uh, cookout, um, and then the next day on June sixth, there will be uh, underclassmen awards uh, below seniors, obviously. Um, and then on June 7th, it will be uh, graduation and uh, project grad, with, which I believe is a lock-in, kind of, like, kind of, sort of, like a uh, lock-in. Um, and then lastly, on June 11th is the last day for all students. Um, very grateful that we didn't get those two snow days. <laughs> um, You're welcome, Chaplain. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's all I have. Wonderful. And, and June 7th at the Winmore Center, UNH, starting at... Yes, 6, at UNH. 6 p.m. Yes. Yep. Thank you so Be much. Go thank you. Enjoy the day. All right, moving to uh, agenda item 4.2, our superintendent's Great. report. Thank you. I have two brief items tonight. I know you like that. Um, the first item I have for you is uh, just an update on the before and after school program. Uh, as you know, on the 17th of May, I sent a letter out to parents and faculty and you folks as well. Uh, just explaining uh, what's happening. I did get an update from Stacy Nivelle. She's the executive director for the Granite Y MCA. And um, she uh, has said that they're the program is built and ready for families to start registering by tomorrow. Um, she's got a two-page flyer that she's going to get out uh, to parents, and that will be ready soon. She's already um, talking to some of the staff who work in SYC. Uh, they've reached out to her. I asked them to reach out directly to them, and uh, they're going to be meeting with some of those staff members soon. And then there'll be a registration night. I know she needs to work it out with, uh, I think, Liza. Uh, so there'll be a registration night. And also hoping to um, have an evening with families that have financial need and, and, and explain the process to receive some financial assistance for for the before and after school program. Um, and uh, so they have also started the licensing process, which they have somebody, I think, full time that does that. So that I anticipate that won't take a lot of time at all. And uh, so, yeah, they're excited. And um, the word's out. Parents, you know, are, know about it and staff know. And uh, so we're moving forward with that. So I don't know if you have any questions for me on that, but smooth sailing so far. And then the, the next item I have is I want to announce um, the hiring of a special ed administrator uh, in the office at the SEU. Uh, the person's name is Leander uh, Corman. Um, she has worked uh, in a number of different roles in different uh, sc school districts, but she's currently working in Reading, Mass, uh, at the public schools there. She's uh, been there since 2018. Um, and she's the special ed administrator there. She's also worked uh, at Convell High School in Peterborough, New Hampshire. So she's worked in New Hampshire as well. And um, it's, she has a really interesting background. She has a bachelor's degree in real rehabilitation services uh, and then went on and got a master's of arts in rehabilitative counseling. So she has a background in uh, real rehabilitative services. Then she took a boatload of courses and got certified uh, as a special education um, administrator, then went on to Plymouth State University and received her Certificate of Advanced Graduate Studies. Um, the team unanimously uh, recommended her. I was on the interview team as well. Um, John Shea was there. John's here tonight. Su Susan Blair. There was a couple of board members. Um, Susan Tierney. I know that... Um, she was involved and uh, some other administrators. So uh, we're really pleased to announce that she's accepted the position and will begin on July 1st. So that's good news. Great news. Wonderful. So thank you. Right, that's it for me. Thank you. All right, moving to our business administrators report. Thank you, Katie. Yes. So included in your packet is the uh, budget update as of May 23rd. 
um, some of the areas that were updated since the last update um, for salaries and benefits. I did release all the encumbrances that I had for the open positions with it being so late in the year. We're obviously not going to fill those positions until next year, so those have been released. Utilities I've encumbered based on an estimate through the rest of the year. Um, technology uh, funds have been paid out to New View for the onboarding and for the month of May uh, based on your approval of that contract. And I've also encumbered the month of June for their services as well. And then the funds that were approved at the May 22nd board meeting for the backup system, those have also been encumbered, ordered, and paid for. So those are all set. Um, I do have um, some items that I would like the board to consider approving tonight for additional expenditures. Um, due to the available balance we have, we're in a position where we can approve some items if the board so chooses. So each year um, we do typically pay out our retirees buybacks in June if we have funds available. Um, it helps us going into next year. Um, so those total $88,201. Um, Jay has come forward and asked for um, funds to replace the intercoms at the high school and middle school and all the clocks throughout the district. I don't know if you've been around the buildings, but most of the clocks do not work in any of our buildings. They have things that cover them. They're not functional at all. So um, he got a quote to replace the entire system throughout the district. It's just under $99,000. I mean, just over $99,000. Um, each clock feeds off of each other. So if you have them within a certain distance from each other, they all coincide and sync together so um, it's a good system that we'll be able to put in place and then it also includes um, improving the intercom system at the middle and high school for better communication there um, he's also asked um, for funds to fix the walls in the high school library that's something we've been discussing all year long um, that leaking wall that's in the library um, He's also obtaining a quote to just replace or fix all the walls in the library so we don't have the same issues on the other walls as well. So he's getting an updated quote for that. The, the one wall was going to be about 7000 so he gave me a rough estimate of 20000 to do the entire library. Um, once he gets the quote, I can update the board on the cost of that, but we put in an earmark of 20000 We figured it might as well, if we're doing one, we might as well get them all done at the same time, and hopefully this will you know, alleviate the problem of those leaking walls in there. And this, just to be clear, and just for the record, this is, doesn't have something to do with the replacement roof. It, it does is, not. It's the weep. It's the weep holes the weep, in the weep walls weep of the library, correct. Years. Yes, it's from when we built the additions um, uh, to the high school and changed the, the layout. Years ago, 30 years ago? Um, yeah, well, yeah. I shouldn't say because it was right after right, right after I graduated okay. from high school. So, so it was a that. long time okay. ago. Just for a good, it was a long time ago. Thanks. Just <laughs> yes. for perspective. Thank yep. you. And I see one more here. Yep. yep. And then um, floor scrubbers, um, there's three that need to be replaced. There are past their useful life, and that totals 26361 So in total, just over $234,000. And we have an available balance right now of about 500000 So it would still leave us a healthy balance for any unanticipated items that may come across from now until the end of the year. OK, so I'd be looking to add this under new business as agenda item 8.2 for um, the titles of the um, of the expenditures and the total amount. Um, you know, again, things could be things you have a very specific amount here but you just say not you could you say not to exceed and then if things come in lower obviously if they came in higher i'd come back to the board and, okay. and notify you yeah can we can we write can we do 200 and you can give a thousand yep something like yep, that just so fine. we don't too too many too many so that yep. we'll we'll be adding that in there i just wanted okay. to let the board know but please All continue right. and then in terms of revenue we did receive our two payments from the rollinsford school district the first being the fee for their sau services and then the second um they had some preschool students um, for special education that are attending our preschool at idlehurst and so we bill rollinsford for the costs of those students and they pay their tuition to come to idlehurst because they don't have a preschool program and so both of those have been received from rollinsford and then I attached to your update a draft schedule for our FY 25-26 budget. Um, I created the schedule similar to last year, um, just adjusting the dates accordingly. So this is in here just for discussion tonight. It's not something you have to vote on tonight. We can vote on it at the next meeting, but if you want to take a look at it. Um, I kept all of the um, meetings, like I said, the same, the extra meeting in February, the Saturday meeting like we typically do, the half day. Um, but if, I'm willing to change it as well if you don't feel that that's a good schedule. But if you want to take a look at it, we can discuss it now or you can look at it and we can discuss it at the next meeting. Board Member Clark. No, we're good. 
Well, I think we're, I think it looks good. I think that I think the schedule right now will make adjustments. And not all of these, the board members all have to attend. It's Some of the them committee. are budget committee meetings, so it's only if you're on the budget committee. And I've noted them there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's the schedule for next year. So I put you on the spot. All right. Is that all? We are in. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Agenda item 4.4, our city council update. Welcome, Councillor Parody Catanzaro. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Any update on the council side? Um, nothing too huge. We did just make it through the budget process, so thank all of you for your work on that. Um, and I'm very excited to join as the council rep and pay attention and bring whatever pertinent information back to the council um we just were uh apologize for being late i didn't realize this was at 5 30 we had a um a committee meeting for uh community engagement community outreach communications um and so we're talking about different things that people um sometimes have trouble finding on our website or have questions about so just an open question out there of you know if anybody has any suggestions of how we could do a better job getting the word out about things let us know Great. And is what's that? What's the type? What's the um, the group's name? That committee's name? <coughs> is it Community Outreach and Communications Committee? Okay. All right. Yeah. Great. All right. Any questions? All right. Moving on. Um, I guess that would be me. The recovery friendly workplace update. We've um, a committee of uh, Principal Tebow, um, our business administrator, superintendent. Um, uh, assistant Principal Idlehurst, Kate Gove, um, our HR coordinator, and uh, Vice Chair Clark have met a couple of times with the Recovery Friendly Workplace Advisor um, about kind of go moving forward with like how education, how the district can, how this can look. I think can, this will be a continued conversation in the buildings. I think as a, as a larger. Um, view the city is already a, a designated recovery friendly workplace but i think it's worth um the discussion constantly to get resources to have the conversation to reduce stigma and to kind of keep this at um a front it is um um it is an important and needed subject i think we can agree on that if not come to a meeting and we'll 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 speak more to it but um we're working on kind of a statement of what it could look like in summers or school district what a recovery informed recovery supportive um place we can be and um kind of making those details throughout the summer so stay tuned if any questions please reach out to me about any any input at all all right Moving on to agenda item number five, committee reports. I do not believe we have any except for one, right? No others, all right. So I'm gonna add E to 5.1 without any, um, that is a new addition. Uh, Councilor Soldati, a oh, counselor, oh, sorry, school board member. <laughs> As a council on council, excuse me, you're not you're not going anywhere. Uh, Eyes on thirty committee. So please tell us what this is all about. Um, yes. So I joined the Eyes on thirty uh, committee, city council committee, um, to dis this week for the first time. Um, they've been meeting, but this was my first meeting last week. Um, and Councillor Goodwin is, I believe, the chair or head of that committee. Um, and he is in the process of sort of updating the city's plan for this Eyes on 30. What are the, what's the vision? What are the goals for the city? And I, and the main conversation was basically about sort of revising. There is an actual document that he shared that, that had been sort of passed on from the last council. And so his, um, we talked a lot about how do we make our goals a little bit more clear and a little bit more concrete and actionable. There was a lot of just conversation about general vision or ideas, but not a lot of um, clear implementation. So we discussed a lot of um, specific uh, actions. One of the things we talked about, and this is something um, Councillor Parody Catanzaro just brought up, is um, th the issue of sort of communications and marketing from the city um, to residents and um, people who need to know. And one idea that was brought up is the importance of having a staff member whose job is marketing and communications, whether that's a full-time staff member or a part-time staff member, because we talked about how every department currently has their own, does their own communications, and therefore every resident is being inundated with information from a multitude of sources versus a singular 
person in the city who can kind of liaise amongst departments and communicate effectively to the various um, uh, populations who need that information. Um, the other thing that was brought up that has more to do with school board was we discussed the idea of an adult ed program. And I said I would bring that back to you all. Um, and I, you know, we talked a little bit about how, you know, we don't have a budget, obviously, as a school district to create an adult ed program. However, what could be possible in terms of using our spaces, um, like our facilities, to offer, let's say, to a vendor who wants to teach a class on cooking or on, you know, theater or whatever, um, to use our space so that the city can begin to, to establish an adult ed program. Um, so that's just a little thing for you to consider. Uh, another thing we discussed was, uh, did, oh, there was a line item about a commission for city council and school board. And I was curious to learn more about that. And I specifically was curious about if there were opportunities that weren't just a commission that like just a, another committee to have motions and agendas, but really an opportunity for the city council and the school board to come together more for like team building, more communication, connection, in some ways socializing so that it doesn't feel like two disparate bodies operating with the same constituents, but actually um, teamwork and partnership amongst the two. Um, so, um, and I believe Councillor Cameron said that in the past there have been more sort of social opportunities where they would have like a dinner at a local restaurant, um, it was sort of more informal, but we did discuss, everyone really agreed that having some form, some sort of relatively informal, but still um, productive uh, event to bring us all together would be a really useful thing for the city and school board, I mean, uh, school district. Um, other small items, these aren't school related, but I think people would be interested for families, residents, as we talked about um, this idea of vernacular mapping, um, which is a concept where neighborhoods actually get to name themselves. So like you, we all know like the hill is a neighborhood, but a lot of parts of town don't have a way to refer to themselves. And it's a way to build community amongst neighbors when they get to name where they're from. Another idea, was, or another thing we talked a lot about was the trails, bike trails, walking trails in town, development of the river walk. Um, and then we talked about the Don't Trash Summersworth uh, program that's been going on. Councillor Cameron, I believe, is ahead of it. And it's been um, doing really well every month. They have like a, a trash pickup. So I would encourage anyone who wants to get involved um, for a monthly trash volunteer pickup day um, to get in contact with them. Don't Trash Summersworth. That's it. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on to agenda item number six. Can I introduce oh, of course. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to ask uh, Susan Blair if she can come up tonight and just talk a little bit about uh, her, the, the grants that she oversees. Um, I, I want to say thank you, Susan, for your service this year. I know you have a new position as a superintendent. God love you. Um, uh, <laughs> and, and, but it's part time, which is good. But thank you so much for your work this year. I know, you know, you oversee uh, over a million dollars worth of grants uh, in Title One through Four, so that's greatly appreciated. As well as that doesn't include the Rollingsford side of it. Also, this year Susan was responsible for bringing in over one hundred fifty thousand dollars in competitive grants. So thank you for that, particularly around safety. Uh, I kudos to you for that, and really appreciate your hard work in that area. So. Um, Congratulations, I wish you thank the you. best, and thank you thank for being you. here tonight, and uh, welcome. Thank you. So um, Lou asked me just to come and talk to you a little bit about the title grants, because if you haven't heard, the world of title grants is shifting a little bit. Um, as you know, the state went through its own little audit of what was working and what wasn't working at the state level, which always trickles down. So. Uh, this year, for the first time, we have what is called a, a Title I Consolidated Grant, and there's also an, a Consolidated Grant for um, IDEA. So essentially, what we were promised for a long time is that we wouldn't know our allocations until July 1st, and that sort of made me worry because I thought, how can I write a grant if I don't know the allocations? But luckily, something happened somewhere, the federal government pushed up their date and finally, I think it was last week, we received our allocations. So 
through our stakeholders meeting this past month. Um, I know Maggie said she'd like to know more about where the monies go, um, considering the fact that it is almost a million dollars. But the changes this year are simple. Um, title, our Title I allocation is $717,171.20. That is down $36,078.02. That's a little scary because that's where we spend our money on our Tier 2 support for our kids. So um, if you know anything about education, you know that Tier 1 is how we teach most of our kids, you know, 80% of our kids tier two is where we teach. If they're not quite getting it, we have uh, mechanisms for bringing in, um, I like to think of professional staff simply because they have the tool bag of tricks to help support those students that are really struggling learners. And then we look at tier three is usually our IDEA, our special ed. So um, this year we received about $36,000 less for that. Um, but what I did last year, one of the things you can do with the titles is you can transfer money. Um, you can't transfer out of Title I, but you can transfer out of two, three, and four and put it in one. So last year I took money from four, put it into one, and that allowed us to um, hire some of the people that we've hired to provide that Tier two support to our kids. The primary is to, to get the support as early as possible. For those of you who are sitting on the board, you know that. You know, if you're a special ed teacher, you're an early childhood teacher, you really need to get that support as early on as possible. So um, through our Title I grants this year, we shifted a position in um, Idlehurst and moved it from a tutor to a teacher because she really is a teacher. She's a certified teacher. Um, so at Idlehurst, we'll have two teachers and one tutor. Um, at um, Maplewood, it's a little bit up in the air, but um, we do have a strong teacher, and there is enough funds to either hire a teacher or a couple of tutors. Um, the middle school has their two teachers, uh, one in reading and one in math. And then for the first time this year, you heard me talk about high, high school because um, you can support high school through Title I. You just have to have your superintendent's nod. Lou nodded, and so we have a high school interventionist. The issue is, as you move forward, um, you want to try and get them young, but you want to continue to support those kids who are either moving into the district that aren't on grade level or have been through some type of trauma, whatever it may be. You want to make sure that you have the resources there to support your Title Ones. So um, at this point, I think we're, we're pretty much covered. I might have to play with a little bit of money to make sure there's enough in Title I, but that's the goal of Title I, to support those children who are ma not making adequate progress to perform on grade level. You know, whether you talk about a mastery of skill, however you, you look at it, um, and it's really targeted instruction. So if you're talking about reading, you want to look at phonemic awareness, phonics, you know, because that's going to impact when they get to third grade. If they don't have those skills, then they're not going to read with fluency and they're not going to read with comprehension. So that, that should be the target as you move forward. For the rest of them, it's supporting them, you know, building their fluency, building their comprehension using different strategies. Title II is your PD money for your district. Um, I think we did a really good job this year of providing the supports that the individual principals have asked for. What um, one of my recommendations will be to John when we finally get a chance to sit and talk is that you have a global, a district-wide PD goal. So you look at something like um, the science of reading, which Idlehurst is doing right now, and that moves all the way through your district so that your teachers have the same toolbox and they use the same vocabulary. There's nothing worse in the world of education than kids being told, oh, it's this in second grade, and no, in third grade they're told it's this, and in fourth grade, you know, you need to have common language, common structures, common strategies, and your kids will grow and your kids will learn. So that's your PD, um, Title III, and that's up almost $10,000, um, $9,594.43. Um, Title III is for your ESOL population. This year they broke it up into two categories. One is ESOL, 
and the other one is immigrant children and youth. I don't know if you've noticed, but our population of ESOL children has um, increased substantially. And so what we've tried to do this year is use the ESOL money for things like our um, family engagement events, which we have, have had this year. We will have three, one every semester or trimester, sorry. Um, and then supplies and uh, teacher learning and things that the teachers need um, for teaching the students. The other part of it, immigrant children and youth, we targeted for another ESOL partner um, to help, especially in the middle school and the high school, with the numbers of children that are moving into the district. Unfortunately, we didn't hire anyone this year, so that money is still there. These, Title I, Title II, and um, Title II, Title III, and Title IV are two-year grants. So if you don't spend it the first year, you have an opportunity to spend it the second year. So hopefully um, we'll be able to find someone who has some experience with um, like Spanish or um, I know there's a lot of Asian families that are coming into the community that we can help them with um, English as a second language. And the last one is Title IV. <laughs> this one really had me. <laughs> I said to Stan, if I have to apply one more time for this grant, I'm going to quit. And he said, don't quit. You will get it. We did get it. We finally got it. Um, so as you heard already, I took one of the grants because it wasn't written last year. Um, you, here's the trick here. So if it's a 24-25 grant, you have to spend that money in the 24-25 for personnel. But if it's left over, you can do it, use it for other things like um, live free recovery. Um, Excel, um, some of the programs that we use for um, the high school or the middle school. So when I put in at first, I put in for the old money, and he said, no, 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 you can't do that, and so we figured it out. We have money um, in this year's grant, and we have the allocation that's coming in, which as you can see is 18000 almost $19,000 more. I plan to have all of these grants written before my last day here. Um, that is my ultimate goal. Um, and if I can't do it, I'll look at John and say I have to come back because this isn't anything that someone without experience can do. It's been a huge learning curve. I've um, appreciated learning all of this. Um, but I want to make sure it's right for anyone that comes in. So that's what you have for your year ahead. And I also provided you with the data of how we spent the monies this year, because that was one of the things Maggie said um, during our stakeholders meeting was, what do we do with all this money? So you should have something like this. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. Um, it was sent out in a separate email by Alice. Um, feel free. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to serve Summersworth. It has been my pleasure and honor, and I wish you the best on your journey. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anything on board's end? All right. Okay. All right. Moving on to agenda item number seven, seven point two. We have one policy that's been read, read for first time. This is its second reading for adoption. Um, policy GBCD, background investigation and criminal history records check, to replace the existing policy. On this, do I have a motion to approve this or? Sorry, I had to get my bearings straight. And so that we're talking about uh, policy GBCD? GBCD, yes. And the motion is to have it placed for second reading? No, to approve, it, to adopt. It's been, if it's been read for a first time. Okay. Uh, we need to, I mean, read it okay. um, by title only. That's what would be the first motion, unless we want to read out the entire 
No, 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 no. I'm going to make a make a make a motion oh, for policy pages. GBCD that it be read if, by title only. Please. Seconded. Seconded. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. And, and then, then I, is there a motion to adopt it? And then I'll have a, make a motion to adopt um, policy C, uh, GBCD. Short title is background investigation and criminal history records check to replace existing policy. All right, second. All right, any other discussion about this? I think that um, there will be updates with this. I think that it would be maybe a good thing for the personnel and negotiations to kind of have a little bit more information about how background checks are and what it is and be able to answer what it is rather than have it being privy to private information just to know what we use, um, what our rate of denial is, things like that and that data and how we use other surrounding um, uh, agencies like the police or other state agencies to double check. It's just kind of a good thing. So I'll put that on an, an agenda for personnel and negotiations in the future. All right. To adopt um, GBCD, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. It's adopted. Thank you. Uh, new business. Um, 8.1, the, fa the formation of a special education committee. Superintendent, should I... Do you want me to start or? Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I requested this uh, as a, um, not not just a board committee, but a school committee to to kind of get our, get our bearings and share information about special education. When we started this year, we were significantly um, uh, behind in what we would owe for special education services, if you remember, in, in the about $2 million, and we had to get that um, supplemental appropriation to be able to cover that. So with a special education committee, with our new director coming aboard, just to have a district-wide focus on that, not just the board, maybe someone from the board, if you're interested in being part of it, please get in touch with me. This will be maybe throughout the summer when things kind of firm up, but something to come out of that so we kind of have an understanding in general as board members where we are financially, um, the percentage of identified children and students and you know what we look at like that. If there's specific things you'd like to know that are not personal, you know, pers private or personal identification of any students, please uh, let me know or um, our new director uh, come July 1. Uh, and then I put in here 8.2, the approval of funds. So without exception for the board, um, the BA has asked for approval of the funds in your packet. One minute. Yeah, to expend. Report. Yep, in the business administrator's report to expend the funds as presented. I would just need the title of what each fund is and we'll round it up to the closest thousand. 235 moment here while I get to it. Yeah, it's on page, it's on your, in your packet in the, in the report to um, authorize the additional expenditures this year for the retiree back, back, buybacks, the intercom, et cetera. Does anyone have it in front of them? I had a quick question okay. before you vote on that on the prior item. Do you want this to be a board standing committee? No, no. I, I one maybe one member from the board, but not a standing okay. committee. Right. Just a general idea. So when we start the year, we weren't, you know, learning from last year and learning how, that we weren't in a good space to be able to. Um, that we, you know, had so many identified students and we had two million dollars that we had to apply. It's more of for the superintendent to create one. So it's not going to be a special committee either. No. Okay. Nope. Thank you. Nope. It'll be reported back to the to the to the to the board for kind of budgeting and just general percentages and things like that. My my plan was to talk to John. We have another meeting coming up. We've met once. We're okay. going to meet again on June fourth, I believe, and we'll we'll talk about yep. that. Yep. Perfect. All right. Does anyone have the BA report in front of them to be able to make a motion to um, approve the expenditures as presented? I motion to approve the expenditures as presented yep. uh, for 2,300, wait, 234,000. So not to exceed 235,000. Yep. That's Second. it. So it's the retiree bet buybacks, <laughs> intercom, clock replacement, high school library walls, and floor scrubbers or Zambonis, perhaps. Okay. Uh, 
I would like to second. second. Okay. Any discussion about these expenditures? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. They're approved. Thank you so much. Um, the we pulse. All right. Agenda item uh, 9.1, our approval of the district-wide safety plan as required by the New Hampshire Department of Labor. We have seen this. It is a lengthy document. It's taken many hours of the Joint Loss Commission, or not Commission, Committee. Um, I think it will be reviewed as, you know, I'm not sure what it says in there exactly, but it will be, you know, reviewed throughout the year. It's not too stagnant. It can be adjusted. So do we have a motion to approve this? I make a motion to approve the district-wide safety plan. Second. 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 All right. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Future meeting dates. Uh, June 11th is our last meeting of the school year. Any comments by visitors this evening? Uh, seeing none. Um, if the board can please indulge me, um, I have a request to read a letter from um, outgoing board member Susan Tierney. I usually don't go first, but since it is her letter, um, I will start off our board members' comments. Okay. This is from Susan, and I quote, <clears throat> I am taking this opportunity to formally and publicly announce my resignation from the SAU 56 school board as the Ward 3 representative. I have made this decision so I can spend more time with my family as we have many exciting and important changes on the horizon. I would like to share some brief comments and regret that I cannot convey this in person, but I have, I'm attending an underclassman award ceremony where my daughter will be receiving an award. I also think it is appropriate that time and attention be rightly focused on those recognized for their many, many years of service in the district. I have truly valued my time serving on the board and my fellow board members, a genuinely dedicated and caring group. When I first felt the call to serve the community in this way, I had no idea what to expect. Those who were with us three years ago know what an eventful journey it has been. From a school board that had mostly brand new faces being handed um, as its first policy with issues still being debated at the state level to challenging emotional discussions and decisions around distri district leadership. Through it all, I am a proud of the cohesiveness of this board. We didn't always agree and we weren't always quiet, but we maintained respect for each other and the perspectives we brought as represent representatives of the diverse com community here in Summersworth. I've always felt that our board's ability to listen to one another could be a model for the rest of the country. I'd like to thank the amazing am administrators I've gotten to know over the years. Chris, Michael, James, Jen, Liza, Kate, Devin, Max, and Caitlin. The kids are in such good hands with you. Your passion and dedication are clear. Katie, thank you for working all those numbers that never made sense to me, no matter how hard I tried. Alice, thank you for your ever-present cheerful cheerfulness, especially when I sent you meeting notes at the last minute. Lou, you stepped in when we needed you. You are leaving the district on steady ground, and I have no doubt the new leadership will be able to build on your success. We have such an amazing combination of strengths. Todd, often the last to speak, but always insightful. You would sit back and listen as you'd like to say, pump the, gr pump the brakes, when things were starting to move a little fast. <clears throat> Barbara, you were often the first to speak, but you were always <laughs> passionate and always trying to think of what was best for students and teachers. Marsha, always a voice of reason, analysis, and keeping us focused on our goals. Carrie, the biggest cheerleader for this district and its students. Proud mama bear for all the kids. Crystal, Sarah, and Gemma, I didn't get to work with you all that much, but I've appreciated getting to know you and I have no doubt your unique perspectives will continue to be an asset in the district. <clears throat> Maggie, I know I've told you many times, especially during the challenging last term, that you were the right person for the right time. Your calmness and level-headedness under duress is truly an asset and exactly what was needed. You have always been there to patiently help and support board members, students, parents, and the community. Thank you for your guidance and leadership. We all did great work together, and I wish you the absolute best with the exciting changes ahead for the district. God bless. End quote. Susan Tierney. So I will be submitting this to City Council as a um, heads up as soon 
this evening. I will make that um, that note, and I think we'll have enough time for the next city council to be able to bring someone in because you have one more meeting in June, I think. I think we have two you more have two meetings more? and then oh. one in July, one in August. Oh, okay, so we will be. It'll work. So for Ward 3. So I wanted to read, just be able to read and save comments. So any final comments by board members? Yes, board member Marsh. Yes. Barbara. Last to speak? <laughs> yeah. No, no. Well, I really, I want to thank Susan Tierney for her service on the school board. Uh, I've said it before that the vast majority of people do not serve and uh, having served the time that she has, including one full term and a partial term, is certainly more than, you know, probably 99% of the people out there. Um, so that's not lost on me. Um, I think in her communication that she sent to board members, um, what stood out to me was that her decision was based on family first and foremost. That was a quote from her, family first and foremost. Uh, and that's something I respect because it could not have been a an easy decision for her. Um, when she started on the board, I remember her saying at one of the meetings in, at the high school uh, that she wanted to be on the policy committee. Um, she was straightforward with that one. When do I start? And um, Chair Larson did put her on the policy committee, chair of the policy committee, which is a committee that meets often, uh, most often, really, and um, usually normally longer. Um, and by all accounts, she really did a great job with that. So that stood out to me. Also that uh, Susan Tierney, what st stands out to me was her, she has always been very respectful. Um, during times of uh, high emotions and passions, um, I don't remember any sort of verbal gotcha moments from her, which can happen during those times. Um, and that's something that I value. And I wrote this down before I heard what she said. I also appreciated her tapping the brakes, <laughs> actually, right? Um, and you know, there were times I think you know she she tapped the thought brakes, um, even when it was not a popular thing to do, right? And um, even if it was something that I I sensed that you know she wasn't necessarily disagreeing with or agreeing with, she just wanted to tap those brakes. Uh, and again, that's something that I value. Uh, you know, and I think that if I, you know, if, certainly if I was to miss a meeting, I would say uh, maybe I would encourage you to do a wellness check on me. Um, however, if I was to discontinue my service on the school board, um, know that it would likely be based on um, my decision to put family first and foremost. Thank you. All right, thank you. Board Member Wentworth. Oh, so, I mean, it's empty. So Susan and I, from the very beginning, um, I've been a huge fan of her, and we have talked a million hundred times about how the two of us have always been a really good example for how the world could be. Um, we often disagreed um about things and never disrespectful um and so because she was always re respectful i always had to be respectful and so <laughs> we just it was Keep like on. a, a non-stop um and she was lovely because she tapped on my brakes some of the time because i am um a hot-blooded italian uh <laughs> passionate lady I am um, and uh, Susan she will be incredibly missed and um, provided a really lovely alternative view to um, the masses at times and represented um, you know our, our city and our world is mixed up and made up of a uh, million different thought processes so it was incredibly appreciated to have her here and we will greatly miss her okay all right 
Anyone else? All right. Well, in brevity, and we can talk to it, Susan, just to, to our, our thanks, and there's things coming her way in recognition, but um, to, to disagree without being divisive, to br build bridges constantly is, is that that's what our community is. We celebrate our diversity of thought, but that's not in an echo chamber. Um, and I just, I just really, I, re I respect, um, I think we, we can serve an, as an example for that and just her work on policy hours and hours it is difficult it is lengthy um, work so just that application of civic um, service is is really is commendable and um, thanks for all those hours and time and eventful couple of years mm -hmm. right we do have a non-public one quick item. oh yes one oh quick okay all right yes. all right quick. Sulu. All right, um, looking make, for a motion to go into non-public per 91A32A through C. I'm making a motion to go into a non-public session pursuant to 91A colon 3 Roman 2 sub sec, subparagraphs A through C. Perfect. Second? Oh, boy. Um, okay, this whole slide said it. Uh, can I have a roll call, please? Maggie Larson. Yes. Todd Marsh. Yes. Carrie Clark. Sarah Brian Hart, yes. Crystal D. St. Croix, yes. Marsha Brown, yes. Barbara Wentworth, yep. Jemel Saldati.